Hello and welcome to another Brawl Games video. Today's commander is Loot, the key to everything. This 3 mana 1 2 has Ward 1 and says at the beginning of our upkeep, exile the top X cards of our library, where X is the number of card types among other non land permanents we control, and we may play those cards this turn. So common permanent types you might find are creatures, artifacts, enchantments, then there's planeswalkers, more recently battles have been introduced, and then we even have a one-off tribal card, the only tribal card currently on Arena. These will soon be renamed to Kindred, so that also contributes towards loot's ability. So you can imagine if we get to exile three or four cards each turn with the ability, that can turn into a very powerful card draw effect. And then to get the most out of loot's ability, we would like to play a lot of permanents, and we don't want to play too many cards that are conditional in nature, since we want to be able to cast those spells from exile under most circumstances, so that essentially excludes most instants and sorceries anyways. And then we would also like to play some effects that let us play an additional land each turn, since we might end up exiling multiple lands with loot's ability, and then it's nice to be able to play all of them. So I've uh, split up the deck into a few different categories, starting with the mana acceleration. These are often creatures, artifacts, or enchantments that help us produce additional mana. So it's always great to have more mana available when we actually start exiling cards with loot, so we can hopefully cast all of them. Then we've got a pretty large section dedicated to not only playing additional lands each turn, but also maybe playing lands off the top of the deck. So once we're empty-handed, besides loot providing card advantage, we can also rely on these creatures to provide a lot of value. And then eventually we also have some effects that let us cast spells off the top of the deck or play creatures. So those are also quite nice together. Then we also have a lot of landfall payoffs, so cards that trigger whenever we play a land. So when we do get to start playing multiple lands each turn, these effects will also start adding up over time. And we even have a few ways to replay lands out of the graveyard. These are especially nice with our fetch lands, which already help us enable landfall twice by themselves. So you can imagine how those effects will stack up nicely. And then we have five battles and six planeswalkers just to increase our permanent types. And then the miscellaneous section includes some other artifacts and enchantments. Taking extra turns is also quite valuable when you've got all these value engines on the battlefield like loot. So those are also very nice to have. Now for the deep dive, starting with the mana acceleration, we have Mox Amber, cheap artifact, and we've got quite a few legendaries to enable it. Then at one mana, the Halfling, a great way to play loot on turn two, and then Elvish Mystic and Lenor Elves. And despite being a three color deck, I'm also including Utopia Sprawl, since it's a one mana enchantment, and with all the fetch lands, it's not too difficult to get a forest in play early. And then we can play an extra land with Explore, one of the few sorceries in the deck. And then a Grow Spiral, one of the few instants, can do the same. And we also have Kellen using the adventure, also leaves behind a clue token, which is also quite helpful. And then uh, the Sanctum Weaver, great if we have multiple enchantments in place, since it can make a lot of mana potentially. A Goblin on our commander discounts our red and green spells, and most of the non-land permanents in this deck are either red or green. Then we've got some ramp artifacts with Arcane Signet and Cold Steel Heart, Ornithopter of Paradise, both a creature and an artifact, and then Midnight Clock, another powerful artifact that can also maybe draw us seven fresh cards over time. And then we get to the play spells of the top section, or play extra lanes, including the Reality Chip, which can play lands and cast spells once we reconfigure it. Fibblethip can plot cards off the top of our deck. Then we have Azusa to play two additional lands each turn. Dryad lets us play one each turn, but is a 2-4 and also fixes our colors. And then Wayward Zortooth, a 5-5 that can attack and block once we reach the City's Blessing, meaning we have at least 10 or more permanents in play at some point, and that's not too difficult when we're hitting multiple land drops each turn, including with a Zortooth's ability. And then Augur of Autumn can help us play a lands off the top of the deck, so pairs quite well with ways to play additional lands each turn. And then once we have Coven enabled, can also help play creatures off the top. And then Rada also lets us play lands off the top and can also use the ability to pump it up. Then we've got the Case of the Locked Hothouse, already lets us play an extra land each turn. Once we have seven or more lands in play, the case is solved, and then now we get to play both creatures and enchantments of the top as well. Then there's Oracle of Moldaya, probably the most powerful of these cards, since it not only lets us play an extra land, but also lets us play lands of the top, so it's kind of everything combined. And then a Song of Creation is also a fun one in this deck, as we get to not only play an extra land, but whenever we cast any spell, we get to draw two cards, the drawback being end of turn we have to discard our hand, but since we're casting all our spells right away and hitting a ton of extra land drops, it doesn't really matter. And then loot can quickly enable Song of Creation to draw us additional cards afterwards. 
and then there's Escape to the Wilds, can also play an extra land, and then uh, exile multiple cards that will persist for an extra turn, so that's a little bit different from Loot's ability. And then we get to the landfall payoffs, including the new Bristly Bill to give us plus one counters, Lotus Cobra, one of the more powerful ones, making a mana with landfall, similar to Nyssa, although Nyssa can eventually find an elf as well if we enable landfall twice with the ability, Falakut Exploration, Exiles, cards off the top, and then can deal damage if we didn't play them. We've got the Provisioner making treasure tokens, so that's pretty similar to Lotus Cobra and Nyssa. And then I uh, can occasionally make food tokens as well. Tireless Tracker makes clue tokens instead and can also grow once we sacrifice them. Course of Crufix also lets us play Lands of the Top and with Landfall gains life. And then Zenikar's Royal makes 2-2 two, two elemental tokens. And finally Tatiova not only draws but also gains one life with Landfall. So it's also excellent with all those fetch lands and effects that let us play additional lands each turn. And then we can replay lands out of the graveyard with Ramanup Excavator. Crucible Worlds or the Ancient Green Warden, which also doubles up all our landfall triggers with the ability, so that's also incredibly powerful. And then our battles include Invasion of Mercadia to cheaply discard and draw to, there's Invasion of Ixalan to find a permanent in the top 5, Invasion of Ergamon can also discard and draw and then make a treasure token, Invasion of Zendikar finds two basics, also great with landfall, and then Invasion of Ikoria can maybe find a creature if we sink enough mana into it. And a lot of these battles we don't actually want to transform, because then they turn into creatures and they no longer count as a battle in play for loot's ability. And then our Planeswalkers include Sahili, which can leave behind servo tokens whenever we cast a non-creature spell. So that also includes other Planeswalkers, enchantments, artifacts, you name it. And then a Domri will pump up our team with a passive ability, and then can make mana while making creatures uncounterable. And the minus two can help us fight if we need a bit of removal. Chandra can also remove a creature by dealing four damage with a minus three. Can add mana with a plus one or provide card advantage with a first ability. Then there's Jace, which can bounce a creature, or maybe just scry and draw. Then a Renan 7 can make a large tree folk, since it scales with the number of lands in play. Can also help put lands from hand onto the battlefield, or just find more lands with a plus one ability. And then a Nissa Steward of Elements can also be played for just three mana as a cheap planeswalker for loot, but we can also use it as a finisher to deal 10 damage out of nowhere. And the various abilities to scry to or maybe to reveal the top card also have great synergy with ways that can already reveal the top card of our deck, so we know what we're in for. And then the miscellaneous section includes my only real instant speed removal spell, Lightning Bolt, can't beat the efficiency, Confounding Conundrum, a great way to punish opposing fetch lands and ramp decks in general, Spreading Seas can also be a way to maybe mess with the opponent's callers a little bit, Expressive Iterations, a nice 2 for 1, a Dock is great with Loot's ability as it will give all those spells in exile a 2 mana discount, so we're not really using it for the plot mechanic but instead just discounting spells from exile. And then a fable and a lot of different permanent types with an enchantment, a creature, and maybe an artifact if we get to attack. Phyrexian Metamorph can copy some of our important creatures, like some of our landfall payoffs. And then we can take extra turns with Time Warp or Karn's Temporal Sundering. And then we mentioned Altar of the Goyf, which can also maybe pump up some of our creatures if they attack alone. And finally, Extraordinary Journey can bounce opposing creatures back and also draws whenever we play a spell from exile. So very synergistic with loot as well. And then our mana base, a couple basics since we might need to search those up. Just playing Odawara and Buseju as the better channel lands. And then plenty of uh, mana fixing, mostly playing lands that enter untapped. And then we've got... Uh, some fetch lands here as well, including the Prismatic Vista, which has recently been added through the special guests, and Fabled Passage, and then kind of the usual suspects here. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, facing Sorin, Mono Black Vampires. Our hand has some good tools, although sadly both lands enter tapped, so can't quite play Mystic right away. But uh, turn two still may be good enough. And then I'm not in a hurry to surveil, so we can start with a Triome. And then if we haven't drawn land, we probably want to look for additional ones. Breeding pool's fine. So we have lots of card types in hand. Artifacts, Planeswalker, Creature, and then even our one-off Tribal card, which will soon be renamed to Kindred. So for now... We could Iteration, and then still play Cold Steel Heart most likely, assuming we hit an untapped land. Which we did, and then Oracle in hand. 
one of my favorite cards. And I'll name green. So at the very least I can play Soren and take out my elf. But they're gonna cheat a vampire in play. What is it gonna be? Preacher? Not bad. Okay, so time to have some fun. Now if I play Oracle and there's no land on top, I wouldn't be doing much else for the turn. I could just go for a course of Crufix and maybe be satisfied with one land off the top. And then if not, I can still either play Augur or Nissa for one loyalty. All right, there is another land as it turns out. So Oracle might have worked out, but now we can play a Planeswalker. And then, let's see, I guess I could just use a zero ability to put that land in play. As opposed to I could have plus twoed to maybe keep Nissa alive if they just attack with Preacher, although they can also use Sorin to deal three damage. So, we'll see what happens. If a Planeswalker ends up in the graveyard, it's still good for Altar, which will pump up our creatures equal to the number of card types in graveyards. Currently half Iteration. So, no instant yet. And wow, Silver Smote Ghoul, the perfect combo with Sorin, since they can sacrifice it and get it back end of turn. So I definitely need to pressure Sorin here if possible. The ghoul does come back tapped, at least. Okay, so... Let's say... I want to play Altar this turn. Might still be able to play Oracle, or at the very least explore. So I'll start with... Playing Land of the Top. Can keep the other land. So I've played one land. Oracle lets me play one more. So I would play one... And then have four minus, so still one short of playing altar. But uh, I'll keep on top and then just explore. And then play altar. Put in a can jump. Our life totals are equal, which actually benefits the Preacher for as long as they just attack first. If Silver Smote attacks, I may as well trade for Mystic, since they would end up sacking it to Sorin anyway, most likely. So Ponens attacks first, gets to draw, makes a token. Alter can also be a way for us to enable Coven on Augur of Autumn. Ink casters next. And they can sack a 1 1 to take out our Mystic. Halfling on top of the deck. Okay. So, could start by attacking with Corsair of Crufix to grow it, and then if I go loot plus auger, I can also play halfling off the top. Currently half creature, planeswalker, sorcery. So this would go up to seven toughness, but I don't see our opponent double blocking either, so they're likely jumping with a ghoul. Okay. And then play Augur, play Loot, Invasion is next. Alright, we'll just play a land and that's it for now.
Invasion can maybe get away to play additional lanes each turn. Or we can get away to cast more spells off the top. Soren might have to sacrifice a real creature now. Because if Preacher attacks, it simply draws a card. So we currently have Artifact, Tribal, Creature, and Enchantment. So we would get to exile four cards with loot. Soren minuses. Putting in, who Westgate Regent, one of the better vampires. So that can uh, grow pretty quickly. Found Azusa, excellent. So could kick things off with a Utopia Sprawl, Enchanting a Forest. Don't have a basic, but that's fine. And then play a land. Play Azusa. We do want to enable Coven here, so we can start playing creatures off the top with Augur. So I probably want to go to attackers. We still seem to have the same card types as before. Can attack with Corsair, since my other creatures seem to be more useful for now. So now Coven's enabled. Opponent jumps. Play Metamorph. Copying maybe Corsair of Crufix or Augur, in case they take it out so we can still play creatures off the top. Although the life gain could be useful. And Azusa's legendary. Play a land. Exploration I can't cast off the top, so we want to shuffle either with Invasion or with a fetch land. Uh, I could also play Invasion of Ixalan, I guess. And find maybe a Fibble Flip to start uh, plodding off the top instead. And then Excavator is also excellent with our fetch lanes and all these extra land drops we get to hit each turn. Time to fetch. Could get a Surveil land, but there's a good chance I want to play some untapped lands as well. So let me just get Basic Island maybe. And then I can replay the same fetch land thanks to the excavator. I've lost track of how many land drops I still get to make here, but we're probably close to the end of the line. Carpalooza and Forest on top, and that's the end of my turn, I guess. Alright, so could have probably gotten a tap land instead. Still not a bad turn. Still have my Oracle of Moldaya, which can let me play one more land drop each turn. And with Double Courser, we can gain a bit of life back. So I'll take six. A Regent grows up to an 8-8. And Virtue takes out Augur. So I wouldn't be able to cast creatures off the top anymore, but I can plot them with Fibblethip. And uh, definitely want to start my turn by playing Nyssa. There's a Lotus Cobra waiting for me. I can draw into it with the Invasion. But I might want to play a fetch land first in case they have removal for Nyssa. So now I would still be able to fetch in response. Draw the Cobra, and then play it before playing any additional land drops. And this I will find an elf. Case also lets me play an extra land, and Ancient Green Warden will give us additional triggers as well, so we gain even more life off Corsair of Crufix. So 
So a lot is happening. Opponent with Heartless Act taking out the uh, Green Warden. I can fetch a response to gain a bit more life. And get a Thundering Falls now. And then we're looking for some more action spells. We've got enough lanes. That happens. Play the case. Play Oracle. Play more lands of the top. Can plot the sword tooth. Plot the tracker. And then I guess we can still play a land out, including ones from here. And then Jace is a good one to keep. So don't necessarily want to get rid of it. But I can still play Fable with the extra mana here. Okay, I mean, that's not a bad turn. And then do we want to flip any of our battles? Not especially. I can start attacking face. And then Jace away to maybe bounce the Westgate region. Now with a solved case we can play both creatures and enchantments of the top. Yeah, how many extra land drops can we make each turn? Azusa is plus two. Oracle is plus one, so we're at three. Case is plus one is four. Plus one is five with a sword tooth. So six land drops per turn. And Grim Tutor, uh oh. Opponent might be able to search up a combo piece that wins them the game on the spot. Or maybe just get a board wipe, which uh, looks pretty good on this board. Alright, so we get to exile five cards, and time warp is probably gonna prompt a concession, yep. As we get to now take an extra turn with all this nonsense that's going on, and uh, probably see most of our deck by the end of this turn. So yeah, that's the beauty of starting to play off the top, since it doesn't matter if you're empty-handed. You can just uh, take over in one turn on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Facing off against Golos, so that's definitely one of the best commanders out there. So don't expect an easy matchup. On the draw, don't have a one-man accelerant, but turn to Cold Steel Heart is probably still good enough to keep. And then I'm tempted to save the foothills until we play Nissa, so we can maybe enable landfall twice in one turn. And that means playing a tap line for now. Bones got their own ramp. The so next turn we can play Nyssa, and then with a fetch land, still play a 3-drop in addition to getting an elf. Okay. Spreading seas might be helping the opponent right now, so not super into casting it. I do need to get an untapped land in order to cast a 3-drop. Can just get a forest, I guess. And then I'll save the provisioner for next turn. For now, play Midnight Clock. And then if Nissa survives, alongside provisioner, we can make a lot of mana with these fetch lanes. Doubling season, all right, so Pun might be casting some planeswalkers that take an ultimate right away now. That's certainly a concern. I think the plan is still Provisioner, play a fetch land, and then likely cast loot. And 
and this I'll find Sarada. All right, so we could play Rada and then still play loot, or we can spreading seas just so we control an enchantment and uh, hit the godless shrine, I guess. White mana more likely to represent a sweeper. And then we have artifacts, enchantments, creature. And next turn we can add Planeswalker to the list, but yep, that's a Teferi that they can instantly ultimate, so now whenever they draw they can exile a permanent. So that's going to be pretty difficult to beat, but we'll try. Ottawara, I wouldn't be able to channel to bounce doubling season. So we just want to produce a lot of permanents if possible. So can go Sahili. I don't have a fetch land right now. Play Exploration. And then, I guess, go for a waterlogged grove. Make more treasure. Can play altar. And then right now we have just land, artifact, and planeswalker. Uh, so this would pump for three. I can mine a Sahili to make another copy. Although I don't think that really does too much for me. So I can just attack all out. And then our opponent gets to use the emblem here to decimate our board. If they have additional card draw effects, they can get quite a lot of mileage out of that emblem. Starts with Nissa. Which, uh, yeah, did a pretty good job. And there's Jace now too, so that can draw or ultimate right away. So now whenever we cast our first spell it gets countered. Well, good thing we can cast a lot of spells in one turn. So our opponent's at 15. We have Sorcery, Artifact, Land, Planeswalker, that's four types. No creature, but I could get one countered by Jace. So then we have five types for Altar. I can minus Sahili to get another one. So now we're talking about plus 10 damage if I attack with a single creature. And I can maybe add Enchantment as another permanent type. So we might be getting there. So get Confounding Conundrum countered. And Enchantments. And then Metamorph can also copy the altar. Minus Sahili. So this becomes a copy of this. And I think we're good to go now. Go to attackers. Triple altar. And that's an 18-powered tireless provisioner to end the game. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw facing the Gidrock monster. So this hand is just a tiny bit too slow, I'm afraid, even though all the cards are great. Without some turn one acceleration, the Gidrock monster is just gonna bury us in additional land drops. So I have to take a mulligan, this is better. Got to turn one Utopia Sprawl. And then Confounding Conundrum can also punish the Gidrock monster for putting additional lands in play. So we want to fetch a forest. Could be basic forest if we want to play it safe. Otherwise this might get blown up by a Field of Ruin effect. And I think for now just name green so we have double green. Not interested in casting loot next turn. And then we could play Cold Steel Hearts, since I cannot play Conundrum just yet because I named green. Uh, or we could play Corsair 
and start playing lands off the top, but then it's going to take me another... I guess never mind, with Sulphur Falls coming into play untapped off the mountain. We can play Conundrum next turn. Opponent with a Recon, which puts additional lands in play. So yeah, this Conundrum is going to be perfect. So we can play Cold Steel, naming blue. And Conundrum. So now we have Enchantment, Artifact, Creature. So it's a good time to deploy loot. Our opponent reads Conundrum. And yeah, they decided that it has to go. Maelstrom pulls to get rid of it. Okay, so next up, we can play Hedge Maze off the top. Wooded Foothills is probably a good draw. Just nice to have a fetch land. And then we can exile it with Loot's ability, basically. And then if I'm careful, I should be able to play a Narcomancer and then still play Loot. Okay. Our opponent yet to sacrifice their Morphic Expanse. Maybe waiting to play the Gidrock monster first so they can immediately get some value. But of course it did enter tapped off Recon, so they couldn't sacrifice it last turn. And now a Spring Bloom. So next turn we can expect the Gidrock monster to make an appearance. And we just exiled three lanes with another one on top. And uh, Renan 7 waiting on top of the deck. Okay, so I don't have a way to play an additional land, sadly. Uh, so for now, I think we just try and empty our hand as much as possible. I wouldn't mind drawing Ren, so I don't want to sack the Wooded Foothills. But I might still want to play it. So yeah, if we go Reality Chip... I reconfigure, I won't have much mana left. So instead I'll just go for Rada. Ornithopter attack, and then I can still play Wooded Foothills just without sacrificing it yet. And Vorinclax will get a couple of forests. Does a good job of blocking our attacks. Rada could still maybe attack since we can threaten to pump it. And a Reclaimer can also get some utility lands next turn. Okay. Find an invasion as well. And they all get a discount from the Anarchomancer. Okay, so step one, probably attack with Rada. Don't really want to be forced to activate it, but we'll see if our opponent uh, goes for it. Ah, they're just going to chump. So play Ren, and then I could even consider using the zero ability to put three lands on the battlefield. Bristly Bill on top. Interesting. So, I could save the fetch lands until after we put Bill in play, and then for now just make a token. And then next turn play Bill, use a zero ability, and put a ton of lands in play all at once. Yeah, I don't hate that idea. And just pass. Opponent's going to transform Vorinclex right away. Fair enough. So, put on Mills 10. And they did not hit any creatures. Reclaimer 3-4 doesn't attack past our 8-8. And we should be able to set up a decent attack. 
So exile five cards since we had battle and planeswalker. One mana Lotus Cobra is a good starting point. Play Bill. And then Metamorph can maybe copy Lotus Cobra. That's my first instinct. Play a land. Could have also played the one off the top of the deck. Start adding counters, maybe onto our flyer, although we might want to tap it for mana. So we can kind of spread around the counters a little bit. Also probably wanted to play Zendikar's Royal to get an extra token first. But yeah, the goal now is to use Ren's zero ability. Putting more lands in play, triggering a landfall. And then we can still fetch, get an extra landfall trigger, maybe get a surveil land as well. And our opponent has seen enough. So with all this mana we can activate Bristly Bill's ability to add more counters to our permanents and then likely set up an attack for lethal. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing the Mythweaver, so this is going to be a hard matchup. This hand's definitely not going to cut it. And this one's also very slow. Alright, this is probably our best hand so far, even though I can't even play Mystic on turn 1. Could draw an untapped green source. So what else do we want to keep? Green Warden's pretty far off being cast. So maybe you still keep the Elf. Alright, so... Can maybe go for a turn 2 Cold Steel Heart. And then next turn play an Oracle, plus maybe an Elvish Mystic. Our opponent also not ramping at the moment at least. So this enters untapped, but we want to keep the green source available to maybe play the Mystic if there's no land on top. Regrowth will allow them to play Mythweaver plus another land next turn. And Chandra coming up, so that won't be able to take out the Mythweaver anymore. So we're just going to look into maybe casting Escape or getting our own commander online. Alright, opponent still being patient with an invasion. Maybe they were missing a land drop to go alongside the Mythweaver. And we picked up Chandra, land on top. So if that's the case, I can maybe afford to play Chandra and use it for mana, just to get a Planeswalker on the battlefield. Keep playing lands off the top. Song of Creation, also an incentive to be empty-handed. Play Loot and play Reality Chip. So we have Planeswalker, Artifact, Creature. This is the opponent's battle. Wouldn't mind finding our own. And the Nissa, also quite powerful here. Reality Chip can maybe block a 3-3 uh, three, three that they animate. Harrow. Get two lanes, which can make four mana. So they can still play Mythweaver. Just a Mythweaver 7-7. Seven, seven, pretty large. And the next turn our opponent gets to untap with all the mana in the world. Okay, Provisioner's not bad. So I don't think we use Channer yet. Can maybe get rid of my top card or destroy the forest. So we'll start here. And then I should probably play the lands from Exile first. Because I can play the ones on top using um, cards like Escape. So we want to make treasure. 
treasure. And then a good play Song of Creation. Make two mana and still escape, or we can start with escape. And see what else we hit. Ooh, Time Warp. Alright, definitely want to cast Time Warp here. Make a treasure. And then this can add mana. So if I cast Time Warp, I have two mana left. Which should allow me to play Song of Creation as well. Because then I can play an additional land, which makes two mana for me. Thanks to the Provisioner. And then Time Warp, take an extra turn. Now, end of turn, we will have to discard our hands, but those cards in exile, we exiled with escape, so they will stay available for an extra turn at least. Can play Sahili to start making 1-1s. One -ones. Ooh, Nissa for more landfall shenanigans. Don't mind if I do. Swordtooth for additional land drops. So can also play Land of the Top, although I might want to channel it. So yeah, let's keep the party going. So we've got a lot of extra land drops still to play. And we can play ones off the top. Azusa is also great here, although we uh, got rid of it because of Nissa's ability finding an elf. Good plus Chandra to play a Lotus Cobra to make even more mana. Don't hate that idea. Oh, this is gonna hurt. Although just casting something from hand would have drawn into it with Song as well, so maybe that wasn't necessary. Either way, we're doing a lot of things. Play a land. Make lots of mana. And alright, our opponent has seen enough. Explores an extra land drop, can maybe get the Xenikars Royal going. But I think the eventual plan probably involved Odawara bouncing the Mythweaver so we can attack down Nissa to kind of limit how much mana our opponent can generate. And then maybe Lightning Bolt can deal with the forest so our opponent's doesn't have as much mana to work with, and then we should be super far ahead in terms of resources and lands in play, and then it's probably not going to be too difficult to take over. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing off against Smeagol. Our hand is reasonable, can play Mystic on one, although both my red sources come into play tapped, so I wouldn't be able to play anything else on turn two. Yeah, I mean, Crucible to maybe replay a fetch land's decent. Still don't love this hand since it doesn't really lead anywhere specific. Alright, I'll take a mulligan. This is a bit better. Turn one halfling. And then all my lands will enter untapped pretty much. Could start by just getting a forest since halfling still helps us play a loot next turn. And then possible I want to get a surveil land with the wooded foothills. A dock is also excellent if we get loot going, giving us a discount to all those spells in exile. And cut down deals with a halfling, sadly. Can still play a dock opponent with her own halfling as well. Alright, so I can take one of the grove, or maybe get something like a breeding pool. To maybe save ourselves a bit of damage over time. So next turn we can just play a loot and then turn four Oracle. As we see Smeagol. And Mox Amber is not bad either. So we could already play Oracle of Moldaya here if we wanted to. Which, uh, yeah, it's not a bad idea. Get some additional mana going first. See a land on top, and uh, I'll offer the trade, I think. Yep. 
opponent's going to assemble the team to maybe tutor up another removal spell. And then next turn, with the Provisioner, if Oracle's still in play, we can make a lot of treasure. Okay, perfect. So play Provisioner. And then... I don't think we want to keep the Excavator, even though it would be good with a fetch land that's already in the graveyard. But if I surveil, get rid of Excavator, I might have more lands I can play off the top. And then Time Warp is coming up. And um, I guess we'll offer the trade even for Oracle. Opponent probably wants to keep Smeagol around. And then I guess Smeagol's ability will make it so the Time Warp goes away. Goes to the graveyard. Alright, that's too bad. But by filling the graveyard our altar also gets a bit better. We have sorcery, creature, land, and instance. And we can add battle to that list soon as well. Tatiova and Shieldred are gonna kinda fight over our life total here. That seems acceptable. And then invasion for two mana thanks to Doc giving it a two mana discount is pretty good too. Okay, can uh, play the invasion since I don't really care about Gross Spiral too much. Find some more lands. Draw some more cards. And Odawara, I might want to draw so I can channel it. And then I've already played all the lands for the turn. But uh, yeah, we can channel it for just one mana since we have three legendaries, bounce shieldreds. And then if I want to, I can still play altar. And set up a decent attack. So this only triggers if I attack alone. Yeah, I guess that's fine. Can send the provisioner, which hits the hardest. And I'm not really interested in transforming the invasion right now. And then if Tatiova survives, next turn we can keep going. We can also decide to make food tokens with Provisioner to gain life if we're worried about losing too much life to Shieldred. And yeah, if we cast a large enough Nissa for X equals 6, we can attack for 10 in the air. Opponent going for Woestrider instead. Smeagol triggers. Goodbye, Nissa. Get to exile four cards. Okay, and a Temporal Sundering, that should pretty much seal the deal, and our opponent agrees. Can play a Royal, play a couple extra lands, make some tokens, and then take an extra turn while bouncing a blocker, and then we should have lethal, especially over the course of two turns. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Bruna, the Fading Light, so an Angel deck looking to meld into Brisella. Okay, um... Yeah, I guess I'll keep. Can't actually play Utopia Sprawl since we're missing a forest, but as soon as we find one or a fetch land, we're good to go. And then turn one Elvish Mystic. Could set up Bristly Bill and then play a land. Now I could play Cobra and then play a land and play Bill. And if they're playing Ornithopter, we're less likely to expect a Sweeper. So play Cobra and then an untapped land to play Bill. And then next turn we could play loot.
Cosmos Elixir. Okay. And Kellen can make an artifact. So, yeah. Can uh, use the adventure. Thundering Falls, make mana. Counter on Bill itself. Domery would add Planeswalker to the mix and also an answer to Ornithopter, so yeah, happy to keep that one around. Even though we're still looking for a forest for Utopia Sprawl. And then I need to make a red mana here. Play loot. And attack. Priest draws a card. So there seems to be a life gain theme as well. Exile the top two. And a fetch line, perfect, so that enables Utopia Sprawl. Can maybe start spreading the counters around a bit more. And our opponent concedes, alright. So we get to fetch, make an extra mana, and then uh, at the very least cast Karn's Temporal Sundering if we'd like. Although, let's see, if we make two mana with Lotus Cobra, then I should even be able to play Domri and then add mana. Still cast Temporal Sundering so it doesn't go to waste. And I guess even cast Utopia Sprawl since it kind of pays for itself. So we would be able to cast almost everything and then take an extra turn. And then Domri can maybe minus to take out Ornithopter while we get to exile multiple cards with loot to pull further and further ahead. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play facing Chu Lane, a deck that's known for providing a lot of value. But uh, yeah, I've got a decent hand with Lotus Cobra making mana and then Rada and Corsair to play Lands of the Top. So then we just need to ramp out our Temporal Sundering and then Loot can provide all the card advantage we need. Corsair also counting as an enchantment is quite nice. And uh, our deck doesn't play much removal so we're not too worried about Selfless Savior. Crucible just waiting for a fetch land. So we can replay those every turn as well, and make two mana with a Cobra. A Ledger Shredder is next. Used to seeing more green mana creatures out of the True Lane deck, so our opponent's got an unusual build so far. I think I'm actually in favor of playing Loot, since Corsair doesn't provide any real value this turn yet. And even though loot only exiles the top card, that's probably good enough for now. And then next turn we can maybe add enchantment or artifact into the mix. Uro can put an extra land in play. So next turn we could see Chu Lane. That's fine. Metamorph, good way to copy Lotus Cobra. Yeah, that seems pretty good. Pay the life. And then I can still play a land and cast a 3 drop. Which will trigger the Ledger Shredder, but that's acceptable. And then we'll make it coarser to add enchantments. So next turn we'll exile the top two cards. And then we'll see if we want to cast an escape, or if we're maybe capable of casting Temporal Sundering. Which is maybe a reason to play another Legend in case they can deal with loot. But that's fine. And then Swordtooth, not a bad pickup, letting us play an extra land. Especially, as we said, if we find a fetch land to go with Crucible, we could replay that fetch land twice per turn. And there's Chulain, opponent's tapped out. 
And then Temporal Sundering Bouncing Chulain is also just a great tempo play. We found Mox Amber, land, and a land on top. Perfect. So I think the plan's Swordtooth. Then uh, should be able to make enough blue mana here. And then still cast our Temporal Sundering. And then I don't really mind drawing a land or exiling a land next turn, so I'll play the one from exile. And then Green Warden also lets us replay lands out of the graveyard, similar to Crucible, but it also doubles our landfall triggers from Lotus Cobra. So Temporal Sundering for now. I'll take the turn, you can bounce Chulain. Don't have any great attacks at the moment. Maybe next turn Swordtooth can get in there, since we have the City's Blessing already. But we're just kind of generating boatloads of value, and yeah, our opponent has seen enough. So next turn, at the very least, play Green Warden. Every land we play, of which we can play two, generates two additional mana with double Lotus Cobra. Then we should be able to cast Escape, see more lands we can play, keep hitting more and more land drops, generate even more mana, and then it's not too difficult to win from there. Okay, so we got to see this uh, loot deck in action. And yeah, I've got to say, when it goes off, it's a lot of fun, although it does take a lot of game actions, so hopefully your opponents are patient and stick around for you to have all the fun. But uh, yeah, if you're a fan of casting spells off the top of the deck, which I definitely am, this is the perfect commander to enable that strategy. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.